Hello, friends, and welcome to Christian Connections live from Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. Uh, as usual, we have a fantastic show ahead of us. Uh, what we call it a show because it's a television <laughs> program. It's all about lifting up Christ's name and fellowship together to inspire ourselves and inspire you as our viewer. Today, uh, to cross from me, my guest is Lynn Harris. Thank you. Uh, uh, she's going to be blessing us with her message about grief. What's that all about? Can you give us a small teaser? Just helping us get from grief to relief. Grief yeah. to relief. I like grief that. Relief, yes. I look forward to that message. Uh, but then we have Marlon, also have a guest, and Hannah has her music lineup. Why don't we start with you, Marlon, introducing your guest. Well, old friend. In fact, I'm, I'm really glad to see him today. He's director of the Southern Asia Channel here at the Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. You all know him as Wesley James. And uh, Wesley, uh, tell us about uh, uh, what we're going to talk about. Your network. Just a brief update on LLB in South Asia. I came back from a visit to India two months ago. So I have a lot of things to share, and it depends how much time we have. Okay, <laughs> thank you. And Anna? Well, today our musical guest is Michael Harris, the husband of Gadam's guest, Lynn Harris. And he is the president of Restoration in the Sun Ministries. But today he'll be blessing us with his amazing voice with some favorite songs. He'll start us out with inviting the Holy Spirit to be here with us with his first song, He Is Here. Over to you, Michael, for that first song. I sense an awesome moving of the Holy Spirit. I see His countenance resting on your face. I know that there presence of the Lord is in this place. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He Mm-hmm. 
in this room tonight. Thank you, Michael. Come and join us here on the set. That was a terrific song reminding us of the realness and the power of God's spirit. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Michael, it's good to have you back with us. I know it's been, it's been a little bit of a while since we had you here. Say again? It's good to have you back with us. Thank you so much for having me back. <laughs> for our viewers who haven't met you before, um, tell us why is it a miracle that you are here today singing with us? I am a walking, talking, singing miracle. God pulled me out of the miry clay and placed my feet on a solid rock. Mm. And uh, he brought me out of a drug and alcohol lifestyle. I should be dead right now, I believe, but God preserved me for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, I'm saved to serve him. Amen. That's why I'm here. I live, I live to sing for him. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the 10th leper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the one who remembered to say thank you. <laughs> How did God transform you from a drug addict to a Christian ministry leader? I opened the door when he knocked. Amen. And I cried out with a contrite heart, and he heard me. Hmm. And here I am today, saved and set free. <laughs> Amen. That is incredible. Now, were you singing even before you were converted? No, actually, I never sang until I, until I was baptized in the, in the church. Okay. And uh, I was singing one day in the shower, and someone heard me from the window. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you should be singing. And I said, you really think someone want to hear me sing? And I've been singing ever since. So and I go to prison, schools, hospitals, variety of different churches, and uh, I just long to sing for him. I, in fact, every weekend I'm singing at some location in the world. What has been... Started. PG. Lynn had a question for you. Said, Tell him where he first started. They asked him to first sing was in the islands of Fiji. I was singing Fiji. one day for some evangelists in the marketplace on a dirt road. Uh, in the Fiji Islands, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I was singing, and all the taxi cab drivers and the people in the market, were, <laughs> the Indian people, uh, and uh, they would stop and listen, and after I would sing, my cousins would come and preach the gospel <laughs> to them. <laughs> I was kind of a magnet for them. <laughs> While he was detoxing from drugs and alcohol. Oh, you were still? <laughs> While I was detoxing, <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. He went there to detox. Yeah, praise God. <laughs> and they heard him singing in the shower. <laughs> Great pipes, I mean, they're just... Magnificent. Well, I, I still don't know what I'm doing, but I, it's all him. Amen. It's coming through. So. Right. Yeah. What has been your favorite place to sing ever since those days in Fiji? Um, the general conferences. I've sang for four different general conferences. That way I can sing to 90 to 100,000 people at one time. So, so yeah, I, I believe uh, the general conferences is almost, it's almost like heaven, I guess, you know. Mm -hmm. People from all, all cultures and all different walks of life are there, so. That's right. Mm -hmm. Adam, did you have a question for Mike? No, I was going to say, I'm sure when Marlon or me sings in the shower, <laughs> neighbors start closing their windows, <laughs> dogs start barking. Barky. So, so I'm, I'm glad for your discovery. Praise Babies God. actually cry. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, they ban me to sing happy birthday or anything at the office. <laughs> the thing I love about Michael, though, is he's done a whole one-hour concert for a lady who was bedridden. And they, a family asked him, because she couldn't come to a church, that he'd go into a concert oh, wow. for her. And he did a beautiful. So he sings to one or to none or Does to 100,000. 100,000. It doesn't matter to him. He just what loves to sing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a real blessing that the Lord chose you to sing in front of 80, 90,000 yes. folks. That, that's, that's quite an accomplishment. I've sang for the last four G GCs, so I'm really thankful to, 
that I was able to be able to Were you do. able to hold your emotions in? Uh, I never can hold my emotions. I, I start perspiring and I start <laughs> crying sometimes. Right, right. <laughs> so I, it's, it's an emotional thing for me when I sing a song. Absolutely. Yeah, These yeah. are special, special mm -hmm. moments. Because I reflect back on what he's done for me in my life. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's a powerful mm -hmm. testimony. Um, now tell us briefly, you're the president of Restoration in the Sun Ministries. Yes. Tell us, what is that? It's, it's a ministry, uh, it's a health ministry. It's under the umbrella of health. health. It's under the umbrella. Uh, Victory in Christ Jesus. We are, I preach sermons, with musical sermons. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, my wife talks about loss and grief, which she's going to be talking about tonight. And also I do musical concerts as well. A lot of and, prison ministry. And prison ministry yeah, as well. Prisons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, we were in a prison in Alabama. Yeah. Uh, I, I did 14 concerts in, in two days. <laughs> and, and I sang to 3,300 uh, inmates. That's incredible. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. Now, how did you master your music? Uh, since you didn't, didn't sound like you were trained for it. At no, I've age. never been trained. You uh, just had the gift. I, I just started singing. Because <laughs> <laughs> God, God just uh, pulled me out of that Mary mar clay and, mm -hmm. and just said, okay, get out there and start singing now. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I've never had any vocal training or anything like that. <laughs> Oh, that's well, was that the natural gift? I, I suppose so. I, I'm still discovering it. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been singing now for 30 years or so. Well, we're so glad you got to bless us yeah, with well, your musical Thank you. It's always good voice. to come to LLBN. We'll always love to have you back. Thank you. We look forward to hearing more of your music later on in this program. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but for now, Marlon, it's your interview is up next. Oh, yeah. We're going to be uh, talking to Wesley James. And this guy is not only a pastor, but he's the director of the, uh, well, Southern Asia Channel, which includes all of India, doesn't it, uh, Wesley? All of India, neighboring countries, and wherever the Indians and South Asians are dwelling. Now, how's your channel uh, distributed? And I say your channel, it's actually LLBN's channel, and well, it's all of our channel. I'm privileged to be part of this LLBN ministry. Actually, we started uh, about 10 years ago. Has it been that long? Yes, it's been yeah. 10 years. And we've been on the air for a little over six years. And God has blessed this ministry in ways I can't believe. But all I can say is praise him for what he is doing. Uh, currently, we are uh, producing programs in about 10 to 13 Indian languages. And last uh, April, just two months ago, I visited with uh, our production team in Chennai, visited with Leonard Devdas. You met him at General Council. Oh, yes two years ago, and his team. He's got two young men who are helping. They're multitasking and producing programs in about 10 plus languages. Some of the times they don't even know the language, but they're editing it. Mm. I don't know how they do, but they're doing amazing <laughs> work. And then we have another person who helps uh, you know, schedule all these programs, which is uh, telecast via LLPN website, via internet and seen all around the world. Amen. Amen. This is uh, uh, quite an undertaking because a lot of the, your production actually uh, occurs in is it Pune. Actually, at this point, um, almost everything is being done in uh, India. Um, the sermons are produced by our Adventist Media Center speakers in uh, Pune. Mm -hmm. And then they take the programs to Chennai, edit it, and then put it through our website. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like to say, uh, besides the language programs, the past several months, we have been also uh, playing live the worship services from the university church. And that has got a lot of attention. In fact, there's a greater awareness of LLBN and LLBN South Asia, mm -hmm. and also so uh, do you consider that just another dialect of Indian <laughs> language? I would say about 40% of people in South Asia speak English. So it is. Yes. It yes. is. It really is. <laughs> Amen. And so they look forward to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what has really got our attention is many people, they're paying attention to the English programs, the language programs, and the gathering place, which is a favorite of many viewers around the world, is also a favorite of our people in India and other places. So last time when I went, they kept asking me about this. And I had some of these CDs, which you distribute through LLB. And when people ask, mm -hmm. you send this out. Actually, we 
no longer have that. You don't have it. You just have just the last two or three uh, in stock from, but from, we have from a lot your more. secret stash. We, 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 so. we have a lot more. And what we do is I've given them out. And why am I bringing this up? Because it says LLB in over here. It mentions LLB. And so this is kind of an encouragement for people to watch LLB. And um, may I say a few more things about this? Last Saturday, I gave some CDs to a friend of mine from San Diego. He took it back to San Diego from Chula Vista Church, gave it to some of his friends, and one of them has taken this to uh, Hawaii. And he called back and said they want more of this, so we're giving them 500 CDs, which they will distribute at the San Diego uh, County Fair Amen. next week. Amen. It's got LLBN on it. So that's one way of mm -hmm. telling people about mm -hmm. LLBN other than just the television. Cam, yeah, why did we start the uh, Southern Asia network, this, this channel? Because of this man. Um, I was talking with Johnny Thomas, who's a board member at LLBN, uh, about expanding LLBN outreach, and uh, had mentioned, wasn't thinking of Southern Asia at all. and. Uh, he said, let me introduce you to a very, very special man. And that he did. Um, first contact, first contact with Wesley was clear to me that God has brought you in, mm -hmm. into this ministry and God had prepped you for this ministry and single-handedly demonstrated that he was able to pull resources together as we worked with him on the electronic delivery, but he was able to pull the resources, the people resources, to develop content and to help expand LLBN message throughout Southern Asia. We had many, many conversations, but to put it in short, that was it. Mm. But if I may just quickly, Marlon, add about the gathering place, Wesley. Um, so we are adding a feature that uh, all the gathering place videos could be seen on LLBN website from anywhere in the world. And then we're adding a feature, not ready today, but it will be soon, where they can also do download the program of their choice and put Amen. it on their computer or Amen. they can put it on their, on their, on their device. So uh, I'm sure that's news to you, yeah. but uh, all you have to do at that point, just give people a link if you don't have CDs with you. Mm -hmm. The other thing, Marlon, is uh, just the end of last year I discovered this. There are about uh, 12 to 13 other websites that are relaying the South Asian programs from the LLBN oh, wow. website. Hmm. which means I do not know who's watching it, where it's going, but I was able to speak to one of them, and he said there were people from Russia, hmm. Israel, Germany, Herzegovina. Amen. <laughs> His report. But otherwise, we know there are people watching from North America, Canada, Europe, France, and um, England, right. and South Asia, even Malaysia. South Africa. Hmm. I don't know. Wherever there are Indians, I think they're beginning to log <laughs> on to it. So I think we are meeting a need. It's a small ministry, but God is doing miracles for this. That's all I can say. So you. all this great ministry, all of this fabulous distribution that you're talking about, it takes a lot of money. <laughs> Where is the money coming from for your channel? I want to say Thank you to LLB and administration Amen. for supporting us. Amen. This is actually, it's all of you. And the viewers. Here, yes. Right? Because you promote, it doesn't come out of my pocket. No, definitely not. <laughs> but the viewers, as they listen to our stories, mm -hmm. they're touched by the Spirit, mm -hmm. and the Lord uses them to support this ministry. Mm -hmm. Many of them may not be able to go to these places. Yeah. Neither can we. But, but God, God uses us. God provides. To, mm -hmm get the message out. You know, Marlon, I think our viewers, this is what I love about our viewers who support LLBN financially. They have entrusted us with their gifts to use it however it meets the need of the ministry. So all funds received by LLBN, we divide it up for every channel to support all our foreign channels as well as our English channels. So big, big thank you yeah. to our donors and supporters from all over the United States of America and Canada who's supporting us to keep all of our ministry, including Southern Asia, on the air without any discrimination when they send their money. 
they do not restrict us. I have yet to see one donor to give the money and say only use it for a particular project. Mm -hmm. It's all and all donations. Use it however you, you can help serve the ministry. It all comes from God anyway, Amen. right? Amen. <laughs> but what a spirit. I mean, it's the spirit of giving and the spirit mm -hmm. of giving with complete Amen. freedom mm -hmm. to, to the ministry. Amen. To use the money how see fit. Mm, cattle on a thousand hills. Well, Wesley, what would you say to the viewers that have supported the ministry of LLBN, Southern a Asia Channel, and, and what would you say in regards to how important it is in these last days? You know, from what I have witnessed in the past 10 years and through the ministry of LLBN South Asia for seven years, I must say that it's all God's doing. And he's working through each one of you to promote and spread his word around. And I'm grateful to each one of you for supporting us through your prayers and financial support. There's so much to be done. And uh, the statistics, as far as South Asia is concerned, by year 2020, there'll be about 600,000 villages that will have access to the internet. Wow. So while we're still waiting for that, we have a long way to go. Continue to pray for us. You support us, and we'll do our best by the grace of God. Amen. Mm. Amen. And I'm so looking forward to another trip with you and, and Ganem to, uh, <laughs> to cover India as we did a few years ago. And Thank hopefully you. this time we'll go to Taj Mahal. Uh, well, yes. <laughs> that we missed last time. We missed it last time. You we didn't, we didn't. <laughs> well, uh, Hannah, there are many foreign language channels here at the Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. Uh, uh, a few of them are the Chinese channel, and what else? That's right, and I was just amazed, reminded of the miracle of how Ella is able to broadcast in so many languages mm -hmm. reaching across the world. As in addition to our South Asia channel, we have Ella Chinese, as you mentioned, Ella Arabic, Ella Korean, Ella Latino, and let's see, what did I miss? And of course, our three English channels yes, as three. well. Smart Lifestyle TV. <laughs> That's right. We have our His Word channel, which we're watching right now, our His Light channel, our secondary English channel, and our Health and Lifestyle Network, Smart Lifestyle TV. So eight networks supported by you, our viewers, preaching the gospel yeah. of Christ around the world in multiple languages. Thank you for making that ministry possible, for making our ministry possible, and for being part of it. Right now, we're going back to Michael for a new song with an old message. We're going to Michael. He's going to sing for us, You Are My All in All. Over to you, Michael. Taking 
my sin, my cross, my shame. Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fell down, he picked me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, oh Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Worthy, worthy is your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please join us back here. Well, I think the time has come now to go to Lynn Harris to share with us her message, Grief with relief. Lynn? Good evening, my name is Lynn Harris and my talk tonight is called Grief from Grief to Relief. My journey into the valley of the shadow of grief began in 2010 when my first husband of 23 years, Dr. Ronald Thomas, passed away from colon cancer. I was invited to live with my dearest confidant, my husband's cousin, Florence Lorenz, after my husband died not wanting to go back home and face the music quite yet. My cousin Florence was then diagnosed with ovarian cancer six months after my husband was diagnosed with cancer in 2009. As I continued working full time, I took care of my cousin, taking her to all her radiation and chemo treatments, doctor's visits and appointments, but was seeing no hope of her beating cancer either. She then passed away six months after my husband. After my cousin died, I asked myself, you need to go back home, Lynn, and face your own home and your own affairs. So I went back home and tried to deal with these two painful losses in my life. A year and a half after my husband died, someone I hadn't talked to in 30 years came back in my life, contacted me. It was my first boyfriend in Hawaii, the one who said goodbye and aloha to me when I became a Christian and said that my new lifestyle wasn't for him. And so I had decided to follow Jesus back in 1981 when I was baptized. Never spoken to him, talked to him. And lo and behold, he contacted me and wanted to know about Jesus. He wasn't ready 30 years ago to, to make that decision. So eventually, I ended up retiring from my job in California, and I moved back to Hawaii, where I'd been away for, from, for 28 years. I married my newly baptized former boyfriend, Larry Wong, now husband, and then he ended up dying suddenly of an undiagnosed, undiagnosed cancer three weeks after we were married. He was baptized in the Seventh-day Adventist Church before that happened. So my journey in the valley of grief and loss affected me very deeply. Three people within 18 months who I cared about very de deeply had all passed away. I'd like to give you some important lessons tonight and share with you what I learned going through the journey with the Lord. The chimes of time ring out the news. 
Another day is through. Someone passed away. Did that someone love you? You may be longing for strength and peace and courage to renew. Don't be disheartened. I bring God's hope to you. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. And with arms wide open, he'll carry you. It is no secret what God can do. If you're in the valley of grief and loss today, or you know that someday soon, you too are going to be entering into the valley of grief, loss, adversity, I have good news for you. For the God of the mountain is the God in the valley. When things go wrong, he'll make them right. And the God of the good times is still your God in the bad times. The God of our day is the God in our night. But how do you face the dark, low-lying valleys and the dark shadows of the valley of death with God's perspective in your heart? How do you soar above the challenges that grief and despair cause us and keep our perspective of God in mind when it hurts the very most in life? I would like to read to you Isaiah 40, 31. I'd like you to look at this verse, Isaiah 40, 31, as God's prescription a medicinal prescription from the great physician. And read it with me if you'd like to, Isaiah 40, 31. And again, think of it as God speaking to you, a prescription from him personally. Isaiah 40, 31, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But what does it mean when God tells us to wait upon the Lord? There are two uses of this word wait in the Hebrew. The word is pronounced kavah, and the literal translation of the word wait in Hebrew means there is strength in numbers. The word describes a binding of a cord tightly together, like when three cords of a rope are collectively twisted together, it increases the strength and tension. Well, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are holding and binding you up collectively from the inside, outside, and beyond. And as you wait on them, you regain, you regain and renew your strength. Ecclesiastes 4.12 also tells us that a cord of three strands is tightly held together and cannot be broken. The second word for the meaning of wait in Hebrew, kava, figuratively means to be actively looking with expectant hope and anticipation that help is coming in your time of need. Going through adversity and grief in life requires this kind of waiting, binding ourselves to the Trinity, being tightly held together by the love of God for you until he can renew his strength in you again. Grieving takes time and gentle understanding of oneself. No one knows or plans how they will grieve loss and tragedy when it visits your doorstep. Every person's perspective and experience is unique to them and their relationship to God. But what do you do with your feelings of loss while you're going and waiting on the Lord and waiting for him to heal your broken heart and bind up your wounds? What do you do with those internal feelings of loss? Well, for me, when I was overwhelmed with loss and change in my life, I would hold that hymnal and read those songs like never before. And the one that meant the most to me was on page 40, 461 in the hymnal, Be Still, My Soul. Be still, my soul, the Lord is on thy side. With patience bear the cross of grief or pain. Leave to thy God to order and provide. And in every change, he faithful will remain. Be still, my soul. Thy best, thy heavenly friend, through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. I'd also like to read to you from Hebrews 5, 8. And this verse says, Though he was God's son, Jesus learned trusting obedience by what he suffered just as we do. Yes, that's right. God's word says that even Jesus learned obedience through the things he had to suffer. You see, I too, like you, had to learn to trust God and obey him like never before through the things I suffered. I learned of God's great faithfulness even when I could not see what the next step in front of me was. Turn with me to Genesis 3.16. I want to explain to you what the, one of the descriptions of the word sorrow in uh, Genesis 3.16, the word sorrow, do you know what that means in Hebrew? It means birth pains, birth pains. 
And in John 16, verse 20 to 22, it also gives us a description of birth pains. It says, truly, truly, I tell you, you will weep and you will wail while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman has pain in childbirth because her time has come. But when she brings forth her child, she forgets her anguish because of her joy that a child was born into this world. So also you will have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. Those are words from Jesus to us. You see the pain and suffering prior to giving birth to something so amazing and wonderful as a child are necessary part of bringing forth new life. So the sorrow and grief you're experiencing from loss and adversity are all necessary in order for you to give new birth to the next journey in your walk with God. We must feel and experience the birth pains of loss and change in order for us to enter into the next phase of life and trust God with all our heart and mind and soul. For only God knows the way in which we should take and what birth pains are necessary to bring us there. You see, Satan uses all his cunning to get us to question God's right to allow trials and hardships to enter our lives. Satan especially tries to get us to question God's right to tell us what we must do to trust him and be restored into his image. Satan wants us to honor him by grumbling and complaining about the situations and grief we face. That's music to his ears. Satan attempts to confuse us with arguments, irrelevant details, distortions, sickness and poverty, distress and anger and resentments, asking, asking God, why me? Why now? Why him? Why her? The devil will do anything he can to keep us from believing that God will use everything that happens to bless us if we will only thank him and praise him. Remember that Satan is using every skill he has to keep you from being at peace the way God is working in your life. Disappointment and discouragement are the enemy's favorite tools to use in order to take away our trust in God. Do not entertain these thoughts. We must put on the whole armor of God and protect our minds from depression. When problems, loss, and grief increase, multiply your praise. Write out everything you can think of when you're hurting the most, what you're grateful for. Every day we face opportunities to decide which direction we are going to go in. We have to decide before trials and grief present themselves to be filled with joy and praise no matter what happens to us. The Word of God states in Isaiah 61.3 to anoint ourselves with the joy of the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Many things about tomorrow, it may bring me poverty, but the one who feeds a sparrow is the one that stands by me. And the path that is my portion may be through the flame or flood, but his presence goes before me, and I am covered in his blood. The one thing that God will never take from you is his presence. People, places, and things are all gifts and blessings in our lives. Enjoy them, treasure them, take good care of one another. But only God knows the length of our days in this world. God may allow everything we hold dear and near to us on this earth to pass away, but the one thing he will never take from us is his presence, his love, and his identity, and his will for our total transformation. God doesn't just want a better version of your old carnal nature but a totally new, transformed, born-again nature, one created in the image of God, which is Christ in me, the hope of glory. And much of our life transformation, unfortunately, takes place in loss, grief, and persecution. We must press into the presence of the Lord, and we will find him to be a very present help in time of trouble. When grief and loss comes to steal your perceived identity, remember where your truest identity alone is found. Listen to these words. You will not find your truest identity in what you had or what you have, but in who has you. You will not find your truest identity in what you did or what you do, but in what has been done for you, which is Christ dying in your place. You will not find your truest identity in what you desired or desire, but in who has desired you at an infinite cost to himself, a relationship with you. Christ is our life. And in every change, he alone gives us our truest identity. And he has promised he will work out our truest identity in our lives until the day when he appears. So be still, my soul, thy God doth undertake to guide our future 
as he has the past. Thy hope, thy confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul. The waves and winds still know his voice who ruled them while he dwelt below. Only God can turn our mess into a message, our test into a testimony, a trial into a triumph, a victim into a victor, and turn our past into praise. Corrie Ten Boom said, the, after she survived the Holocaust in World War II, being tortured there, she wrote these words, when you're down to nothing, God is up to something. The faithful see the invisible, believe the incredible, and receive the impossible. God was up to something when I was down to nothing. God told me to go out and find hurting people, suffering more than I was. Three months after my second husband died, I was introduced to a grief support program, one I'd never heard of before in my church. God led me to go work in the women's prison in Hawaii. And while I was there, I could see that these women needed to hear the music that I was listening to to heal my soul, these beautiful hymns. I was looking for someone to come to Hawaii and provide ministry in the Hawaiian prisons, schools, and churches. One night, I heard Michael Harris singing on YouTube. I contacted him. I contacted several musicians uh, quite a bit, and it was more expensive than I could afford. And when I contacted Mr. Harris and asked if he would come to sing in prisons and schools in Hawaii, he said he would be glad to do it. And I asked him what was the cost. And he said, I just take up a love offering. And I said, what if no one loves you? And he said, well, so far, God has been taking care of me for 28 years. And so we were able to bring Michael Harris to Hawaii about a year later. He sang in 22 churches, schools, and prisons throughout Hawaii. He really blessed our islands. And uh, as he did that, I started speaking on loss and grief and how to regain our health um, and follow health principles. And we decided in 2014 to take a leap of faith. And I married my third husband. Um, he's a very brave man. But I'm here to say that right now we have a ministry doing this worldwide to tell people that God cares in our darkest times. Thank you for having me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lynn. Please join us back here. What a, what a precious topic that we don't often hear enough about because the reality of life, everyone loses someone. You know, I, I was in our church for almost 30 years from the time um, I was baptized, and I was really involved in health ministry. And do you know, unfortunately, I was never, ever attended one grief support program. I never even had it come into my awareness. I was married to a doctor, and, and it just, it was not, I did cooking schools and all kinds of programs, and I just, I never saw a grief support program. So uh, when I was going through grief, I ended up, your brain changes, and I started isolating. I felt like people would lose their faith if they came around me at church because I'd cry at the drop of a hat or if I hear a note from Blessed Assurance, I was on the ground. And I thought people would lose their, <laughs> their hope if they saw me, so I isolated. And it was very, it was the wrong thing to do. And in Hawaii, I was introduced to this grief support program, and it was not in any of the churches there. And so it was, I went outside to a different church and it's um, called griefshare.org. And I just like to encourage people to look in. You can just go online and see, a, put your zip code in. And now I've found it in about 15 Adventist churches. And it's really powerful. Yeah, program. I believe the series church, they, uh, they have the, the grief support mm -hmm. there. Arizona has it now. And I started it in Hawaii. I started doing it at my own church there. And I found that I never had anyone really want to join my church after teaching them to make carrot juice or anything. But when they came to 13 weeks of grief support, they really asked me, what do you do here on Saturday? And what do, you, what do you believe? And they just wanted to be with people who cared about them when your life is falling apart. So I, uh, hmm. I was really well, blessed. I think only through the power of Jesus you could have mm -hmm. overcame these tragedies yeah, mm -hmm. that you dealt with. And I'm, I'm just... Uh, there's so many hurting people out there who just don't know where to turn to because That's they lost right. their spouse, you know. They, they look in the closet, the closet and say, what do I do with all these clothes that he once wore? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and they think about it and they reflect back and sadness appears, reappears in their lives. Everyone has to go back to work after the funeral. You know, they've got to get on with their life and you have to deal with... And no one talks about it. <laughs> Nobody talks about People it. People don't know what to say fact, and they, they shy away from it. They would call, my sister would say, are you still crying? You know, just... 
you stop answering the phone because you don't want to have to, yes, I'm crying, and you know, it's just, yeah. so you, your brain chemistry changes in grief, and um, we have to be patient with ourselves and, and um, find that support, and this is a beautiful type of program. We need to have more um, support and let people know, even if we don't know where one is, look for something that, you're, um, that people, you know, there's men and women coming to this, they have one for children. Um, children that are not dealing with grief will grow up very dysfunctional because mm. they don't know how to process and they'll turn to, what happens is people turn to things to uh, comfort themselves outside of God's will. And so um, they go to people to hear their husbands, they, you know, they go to all kinds of resources to uh, look for answers to what happens when you die and they need to go to a place where the truth is being told. Yeah, it's funny so. you should say that. That was five years old when my father passed away and I was playing with him in his lap. Oh, and until I was age 13, I thought I had killed him. Mm. Oh, Never see. talked to anyone. Wow. It didn't mess me up, but it was haunting me in the back of my see, yeah. mind we, at age 13 before I said anything to my mom about it. We, and she said, honey, mm. you have right. nothing to do with it. It was, it was his time. But no one helped you process that. No one knew right. as a child of five years old will even have memories right. yeah. of right. such things. But I kept it in the back of my mind. Luckily, right. I was... Uh, nurtured by a very loving family, so life was balanced for me, but not everyone has that chance right. and opportunity. Yes. I took someone who had 30 years earlier had uh, died of, her son had drowned 30 years earlier, and she um, had no support really, you know, they just, baby died, uh, she was home with the child when it happened, it just suddenly and, and never ever dealt with it, and when I took her 30 years later to my grief support program, she finally got relief. And um, she was able to help her children who were already grown by then. So right. we, we, it, there's never too late to start dealing with um, some of the heartaches of our past. Because God wants to heal. Yeah. He, wants, he doesn't want us just halfway whole. He, he wants, salvation means to make whole. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and grief is unavoidable. It's mm -hmm. in everyone's path. Yes. yes. Whether mm -hmm. a brother or sister or spouse mm -hmm. or a child. Sooner or later, we all face yes. losing someone. You know, I've lost two brothers, mm. both were at age 50, mm. died right. two years apart, wow. which I never thought we will see that happen in our Not family. At that age. Something you deny. You don't think it could right. happen to your family, but it could happen. Here's the other side anyway. to that coin, though. One day we're going to be in a place where there'll be no more pain, Amen. no more suffering, no well, more sorrow. Well, mm. and that's what yeah. made it easier for us as a faithful family, because mm -hmm. mm. after the two brothers, we lost a sister-in-law as well at yeah. age 40 something, mm. wow. but no one knowing that we will re reunite through Jesus, Amen. what Amen. gave us hope and strength to deal with And be whole again. <laughs> what also helped me was, and I did a grief support program because like I said, I was always doing health classes uh, and having to really beg people to come to the classes <laughs> because people didn't really want to learn about changing their diet. When I did a grief class, uh, it was in on this website that was international. And in Hawaii, every week, three to four new people were coming in that just lost somebody. Hmm. And God made me realize how big the circle of grief is around us mm -hmm. and that we need to open up our eyes to it. It's a major part of health just yes. and healing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a major mm -hmm. component we don't talk about, but it's just as real as mm -hmm. having uh, a physical right. illness. And some die with very bad relationships between each other. I had a boy that was in our, came to our group and his father never told him he loved him. He, he died in the elevator with his son, and it was just, there was a contention and all kinds of things. So what do you do when it's not a good goodbye? And then mm -hmm. others have committed suicide, and there's so many ways that people have died that no one gets to talk about, and this is a safe place to do that. And Does anybody ever try this on, you know, let's say, uh, veterans returning from the Mideast? Well, this is what the, why the veterans uh, post-trauma, you know, programs are so successful because it's group therapy and um, this is where they heal when they hear someone else saying they feel the same way why did I get to come home and he didn't this is a common thing and many spouses die and the wife will say I, you know I wish I died with him and when you feel like the plug has been pulled out of your yep. your body Lynn we have just mm -hmm. a short minute mm -hmm. left um, what tip or advice can you give to someone who's dealing with grief how could they manage their I, I I encourage you, if you don't have a program in your own church, is to go to griefshare.org, put in your zip code, and it'll show you a church that's holding a grief support program. It's only 13 weeks, and it helps you get through the valley of the shadow and not stay there. It's 
So get support, talk to people, don't isolate. You need to speak how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Well said, thank you so much. Hannah, yeah. on that note, we need something a little bit more uplifting. <laughs> promising like song. music. That's right. And this is a song that I know Mike's been itching to sing <laughs> for the last 30 minutes at least. Mm -hmm. But it's a greatest promise in the Bible, no more night. Mm -hmm. Over to you, Michael. Mm -hmm. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The tiniest thing earth and heaven will pass away. It's not a dream. God will make all things new that day. Gone is the curse from which I stumbled and fell. Evil is banished to eternal. Never crying again. Praises to the great I am. We're gonna live in the light of the risen land. bow down to sing the only sound is the praises to Christ our King slowly the names from the book are read I know the King there's no need, no need to dread, no more night, no more pain, no more tears, never crying again. No 
more tears, no more suffering, no more pain. Come, Lord Jesus. Oh, come, Jesus. Thank you for sharing the song with us. Thank you. And your talent. Well, uh, folks, we're going to talk a little bit about how God is using LLBN to change people's lives. As you know, LLBN is broadcasting 24-7, eight channels, nonstop, Amen. nonstop. Amen. Uh, we had uh, Wesley visit with us here earlier, talking with Marlon about what Southern Asia is doing and where it is reaching. Imagine someone get on the plane and try to reach out to all those people <laughs> visiting from home to home to share what Southern Asia is sharing with them around the world. Is that possible even? Not only that, we're trying to reach 1.5 billion people mm. from South Asia. Mm. So, <laughs> so there, media and television is a very, very powerful way Amen. to spread the good news of Jesus. May I, make, may I, may I plug something really yes, quick? Yes, sir. It's going to be in uh, September the 27th, I believe, in Alameda, California. There's going to be a men's retreat, and it's a Pacific Union gathering. It's got, expecting 3,000 men. We're going to be a, aboard an uh, aircraft carrier, mm. and Jose Rojas will be the speaker, and I will be the singer for it. Wow, praise God. Mm -hmm. We need to pray for yes. Michael yes. as he perform mm. and pray for his safe return as well. And thank you, and God bless you for thank doing you. that. Thank you, God well, folks, we have less than 30 seconds. I wish we had more time <laughs> to cover more discussion about all topics, but this is all we have. We'll be back with you next week to talk about more. But Hannah, for how much an hour people can share the gospel? For just $100 an hour, you get to be part of a ministry that's sharing great messages that you've heard today of how Christ is our salvation. Amen. And it's all about Jesus and his salvation. We'll see you next week here on Christian Connections.